Chi. The way I see it, the only way of attacking Ho Chi Minh City on foot is two ways. One is to have absolutely no plan at all, throw caution to the wind and be at the mercy of the elements and those pesky Seom drivers. Or have a plan with a mission. So when the heat hits and the storms roll in and those pesky Seom drivers come calling, which they invariably do, you'll have an exit plan. Okay, in my infinite wisdom, we're going to go with number two. I've got a little plan for us today and we're going to go off the rails a little bit. We're going to walk around a small section of Saigon's original railway line here in District 1 and we're going to make some stops along the way for food and drink. So it should be really interesting. Let's do it. So our walk starts here, right on the corner of Tonduk Tang Street and Ham Nee Street in District 1, right on the Saigon River. Now, it might come as a bit of a surprise to you that this great city of ours was built on prostitution and drugs. And I've got the evidence to prove it. Well, one piece anyway. I'm in a big lease, so they don't miss me. Okay, and I present to you my major piece of evidence to support my wild claim that this city was built on prostitution and drugs. These days the building behind me is called Customs House, but it was built back in the 1860s by a massive drug lord by the name of Wang Tai. He was Cantonese and he had a monopoly on the city's opium trade. So when the building was completed, it was the grandest structure in all of Saigon, pretty much. Not even the head honchos of the colony had houses bigger than this. So this just, just, just goes to show how important Wang Tai was. And I guess that's what happens when you have a monopoly on the opium trade in a city. So let's say for some inexplicable reason you don't believe a word I'm saying. Well, a little bit more proof that this building was built on drug money is that the reliefs along the top there have poppies in their design. Now round about 1870, not that long after Wang Tai finished this property, he sold it and it became the Cosmopolitan Hotel. And of course it became the place to stay when you came to Saigon. What, it had European style services and comforts. It had opium, oodles of it, no doubt some great cocktails, but one thing's missing. Girls, of course. Now, while at the front of this building was opulence, at the back, it was seediness. And what do you want after a big night on opium? You want girls. So, allegedly down this back alley, there was a row of whorehouses, for want of a better word. And so, guests who were staying at the Mai Son Wang Tai could duck out the back here for a little bit of nookie. Okay, that's enough about drugs and prostitutes. I can explore that in more detail in another video. Let's talk about the street for a moment. Ham Nee Street back in the colonial times was known as Crocodile Bridge Creek. And it was named as such because allegedly along its riverbanks were pools full of crocodiles and they were bred for meat. And here I was thinking all this time that it was only sharks that circled in this area. So as you can see, this street's been called a lot of names over the years, a little bit like me. Now, of course, it's called Ham Nee after an emperor who was in power for just one year before the French banished him to Algeria. And then for a while, it was called Boulevard de Canton because of the Cantonese population that lived here just over there. And then after World War I, it was renamed again to Boulevard de la Somme after the battle in France. And something that I found out while I was researching this street was that close to 100,000 Vietnamese men fought for the French in World War I, and around 12,000 of those died. 
Now there have been plenty of other notable things to have happened along this street. The building behind me was the first US Embassy and CIA offices in Saigon and of course was made famous when the car bomb detonated out the front in 1965 and killed 21 people and injured over 180 others. Just a little bit further along here is the trade school where a young Win Tatan went to school and of course he went on to have this city named after him. And then just a little bit further along there, I fell over and got drunk once. Okay, and if you're into that kind of thing, not me falling over and getting drunk, you can use New Lan Bakery just over here as a reference point in order to find the old US Embassy there. Okay, it's getting towards lunchtime and I'm near a bakery. It's time to eat, I think. Okay, I found a pretty unusual spot to have lunch. I'm right in the middle of Hum Nee Street, but it's got shade and I've got a little power box here to rest my camera on. You've just got to sort of ad lib when you're a one man show. Now, um, as I said just before, it was time to get something to eat and I've just bought myself a little bun bao. Okay, so here's my little bun bao and uh, bao in Vietnamese means bag and uh, bun of course means this stuff here and uh, inside and in this case is some piping hot probably pork mince um, and a few little veggies and onions and stuff like that so it's almost like a Vietnamese style meat pie hmm definitely needs tomato sauce. Okay, so there's my little snacky down the hatch. I just hope I haven't jumped the gun because there's this market up here and I might find something tasty in there as well. Let's go and check it out. So here I am at Saigon's oldest wet market. Who doesn't love a good wet market? And it's called Joku Tatam. And uh, originally it was over near Win Huai Street a long time ago, and then parts of it were moved over here. So you might be wondering why Hum Nee Street is so wide. Well, I did too until I found out that it's the site of where Saigon's first railway station was located, just over there. These days, it's a bus terminal and it serviced the Saigon Mito Line, which is about 70 kilometers south of here in the Mekong Delta. As the city developed, so did the rail network and a second line was created, that was from Saigon to Nha Chang, which eventually became the line all the way to Hanoi. And because of the railway's growing popularity and a lack of space, the original train station was moved to 23.9 Park, just up here near Bentan Market. Believe it or not, Saigon was the first place in Indochina to have a railway. So this building behind me is about 100 years old, maybe a little bit more. At the moment, you can see these blue hoardings here. Beneath us, they're constructing a new metro and it's been going on for the best part of a decade and probably will go on for another decade more. But let's hope that this building, which is still the railways building, stays here for a long time yet. Now here I am at the old Bentan Market roundabout that 
hasn't been here for a long time because of all the development with the metro, uh, which means that I'm right near Bentan Market and I haven't been here for ages. And I don't usually come here pre-COVID. It's said that up to 10,000 people per day would flock to this market. There are about 1,500 stalls and about 6,000 businesses. So for someone like me who lives here, I sort of keep away from this place. But now that it's just reopening, um, I'm pretty happy to come here and check it out and see how it's faring. Okay, I found myself a lovely little place to have lunch right outside the west gate of Bentan Market. COVID-19 has meant that we can't do so many things, but it's allowed me to do this. I would never usually be able to sit here and have lunch because there would be thousands of tourists here. So I'm going to really enjoy this moment. I went inside and I bought a bun tap gum and uh, basically it's a noodle without a soup and it's got some jayo which is uh, fried spring rolls and there's some barbecue pork and some other sort of mystery meat stuff there and uh, topped with peanuts and of course um, a nookmum mix with uh, carrot and uh, looks like a rad uh, sorry mango so let's get stuck into it <laughs> Well, there you go, there's lunch. I got really lucky. It's very rare to be able to sit out here on a makeshift table and chairs and have something to eat with nobody around. So I feel pretty lucky about that. Now I better give this stuff back to the lovely lady over there and we'll continue our little journey. Let's do it. Oh my god, this is ghastly, this monstrosity. Clearly, whoever gave this the all clear to go ahead missed the memo on Vietnam hidden charm. And we're a long way away from the time when the city was called the Pearl of the Orient. This is just way out there and really out of step with the history of the city, I think, and, and how I knew the city when I first came here. I, I don't know, I have a lot of concerns for the place and um, I just don't think this works. Ah, that's nice. A nice cafe suda from Mr. Lin's coffee shop. It's a new coffee shop and as you can see it's really popular with the Instagrammers around town. And it's just a nice change from all of the construction going on around me and the, the modern buildings. His concept here is 1975 Saigon, so it's almost like 
this place is my own little rural railway station given that today's video is about retracing the first railway line or a small section of the first railway line in Saigon and directly across from me is 23.9 Park. These days it's a green space but a hundred years ago it was the rail depot and right at this corner here where the street veers off to the right it was the train line that headed off to Mito and a little bit further on off to Nha Chang and then eventually to Hanoi. So it's good to sit here and just try to imagine what it was like back then before I walk off down the street again and see what's down there. Okay, so here I am on the busy Fudong roundabout just here behind me and it's a six-way roundabout but initially in the early days it was three because the train line came over from the left of my shoulder and went directly across the street there to Le Thi Ring out to Mithal and then to my right here is Kakmang Tang Tang CMT8 it's commonly known as and the train line veered off in that direction towards Nha Chang and then eventually of course Hanoi. These days the Saigon station is down there about two or three kilometers away. So um, yeah I hope you're getting a little bit of a feel of how the train lines were. If you've ever wondered why some of Saigon's streets are just all over the place and there's weird angles and all sorts of stuff like that, then probably it's because a train line went through it. Oh, I walked through here just a couple of days ago and it was nothing like this. I think it's at least three times as busy, I think. It's just come alive in the last couple of days. And I'm looking forward to just getting down this quieter street here. And this is Le Thi Ring Street and this is where the train line out to Mito once went and it's also these days home to one of the famous, probably the most famous and the most loved bun mi in town, Huynh Hua. So I'm going to sink my teeth into one of those and you can watch. <laughs> Sipping on the potion, all that good emotion. Just my kind of heat, keep it on me, keep testing by the potion. Love it, this devotion. Live it up, live it up, live it up, sweet emotion. Cause every time, every night, you and I count a roll. Switch it up, switch it up, switch it up, where I'm going. Stay on the fly, just in time, know the right way to go. Bohemian. You always take me so high. You always make the highlights. I love the way we vibe up. You're like a Santa phone. Ooh, that's what I see. You got what I need. Sipping on the potion. All that kind of potion. Just my kind of heat. Keep it on me. Destined by the potion. Okay, I think I've found the best place to eat my little slice of heaven. I'm here in the grounds of Quincy Catholic Church and it's been here for over a hundred years and it was here when the train line went through. So I thought this would be a, a logical place to sit down and enjoy my massive bun mi. Mm. Oh yeah. A 
and no, I didn't eat the whole thing, although I have put a full one away once upon a time and uh, it's massive. I don't really recommend you do it unless you're starving. I've uh, eaten about a quarter of it and I'm taking it for later on. I'm gonna take it home and eat it. And uh, now we're just standing at the front of the bus station here at uh, Pham Nu Lao and uh, it's opposite the church where I had my bun mi and uh, this is the western end of what was once the Saigon rail yard so um, I think just by looking at it you can get a sense of what it was kind of like back about what 60 60 or 70 years ago in Saigon. Okay, well that's the end of the line for us today. I'm standing right at the end of the Pham Nu Lao bus station and um, on the corner of the roundabout here at Gong Gwyn and Win Jai Streets. And uh, this would have been the end of the rail yards. Um, and there were probably trams that left here as well and went out to the other districts. I know that there was one that went out to Jolon, which is just ahead of me there. The walk is about three kilometres, so it's a pretty easy walk. And I didn't intend it to be a foodie walk at all, but as you saw, uh, I managed to find some places along the way. There are literally hundreds of places where you can stop to get a drink or something to eat. Um, the only problem is now, I've got to get back. I just wish there was a train or a tram to take me back, uh, but I could do with the walk anyway. So I hope you enjoyed my video today. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share so other people get to see my content. And if there's anywhere in Ho Chi Minh City that you'd like me to cover, let me know. Get in contact down below in the comments or reach out on social media. Until then, don't forget your ticket to ride.